All right, in this final video uh, talking about infinite series, we just want to uh, make sure we really understand the relationship um, between the series uh, and the two sequences associated with that series. So the first, uh, I'd like you to list uh, for this series the first four terms that are added up in the series. And you'll notice our good friend, the factorial, is there, hope you remember from uh, uh, our video on sequences what that means. So, you know, the, the first four terms that are added up in the series, so, so the terms that are added up in the series, that's the, we usually call that the a sub n's, right? And that is 2 to the n over n factorial. Okay, so what is the first term in the sequence. Well, notice where we start in the sequence. Do we start it at 1 or do we start it at 0? Well, we might have to go to the series in this case, right? It says starting at n equals 0, so we do want to start this at 0. That's technically the first term in the sequence. So 2 to the 0 over 0 factorial. 2 to the 0 is 1. 0 factorial, remember we define that to be 1, and so we get 1. What's a sub 1, the second term in the series, 2 in the sequence, excuse me, uh, over 1 factorial. So I get 2 divided by 1, which is 2. The third term in our sequence is going to be 2 squared over 2 factorial. 2 squared is 4, 2 factorial is 2 times 1 is 2, and I get 2. And the fourth term in the sequence is a sub 3, is 2 cubed over 3 factorial. Uh, 2 cubed is 8. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1 is 6. Right, so remember what that is. That is 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6, which is 4 thirds. Okay, so there's the first four terms that are added up in this series. So this is a, this is, we're forming a sequence, right? And, and, and the sequence is the terms that we're adding up in this series. It's the a sub n's. Now, we also have the first four, the, the terms in the sequence of partial sums, right? So that's what I'm typically calling the s sub n's, right? And, and s sub 1 is just the first term in the series that we're adding up, which we said is 1, right? S sub 2 is the sum of the first two. 1 plus 2, right? 1 plus 2, the second term is that. So that's 3. The third term is going to be 1 plus 2 plus what? The third term here is 2. That's 5. And S sub 4 is what? 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus thirds. Which is 19 thirds. Okay. Now again, you might say, why did you start with 1 and not 0 here? It doesn't really matter. Uh, in this case, just you can, if you want to start with 0, you can. But the first term in the sequence of partial sums is just the first term in the sequence of terms we're adding up. The second term in the sequence of partial sums is the sum of the first two terms. 1 plus 2 is 3. Third term will be 1 plus 2 plus 2. Fourth term will be 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 4 thirds. Fifth term will be this one plus this one plus this one plus this one plus the next one. Okay. But you see the difference, right, between these two? They are not, not the same, right? So the, the a sub n's, I'm listing them out, they look like this. 1, 2, 2, 4 thirds. Right? That's, that's how they go. The s sub n's look like what? 1, 3, 5, 19 thirds. Okay. All right. Now, the relationship of the sequence of partial sums to a series is very important. Um, so let's play around with, with these relationships a little bit. Suppose that, again, we have an infinite series. Notice I'm starting at n equal 1 this time. And it's convergent. I'm telling you it's convergent. 
okay? And, and S, therefore, is the sum. And it has a sequence of partial sums where the nth term of that sequence of partial sums is this, right? What's the first term in the sequence of partial sums? Well, when n is 1, I get 5 minus 2 divided by 1, 5 minus, I get 3, right? Just do s of n would be the sequence. When n is 1, I get 3. When n is 2, uh, 2 squared is what? 4. 5 minus 2 fourths, 5 minus a half, 1 half. So just, yeah, anyway, that is just, you know, let you know that's the sequence of partial sums. This is the nth term for it. Okay, so what is the value of n equal 1 to 5 of a sub n? This is the sum of the first five terms uh, in our series. Sum of the first five terms in our series. Right? That's a sub 1 plus a. That's simply s sub 5. Right? S sub 5. It's the fifth term in the sequence of partial sums, right? And, and so, what is S of 5? By the formula, it's 5 minus 2 divided by 5 squared. It's the fifth term in, in the sequence. Which is 5 minus 2 25ths, which is 123 25ths. And there's the, there's the value of that. And notice I'm able to do that without, I don't actually yet have a, uh, anything, any formula for the A sub n's. I don't even know what what you know what I'm adding up here other than that the sum is this right and I get that from the sequence of partial sums now I'm going to ask you though what is the value of a sub 3 you say well I don't know I don't have a I don't plug in 3 in here that's s sub 3 not a sub 3 but there's a relationship right s sub 3 is what a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 it would be the sum n equal 1 to 3 of a sub n right what is s sub 2? It's a sub 1 plus a sub 2. Do you see a way I can get a sub 3 from my sequence of partial sums? What is a sub 3 equal to? It's s sub 3 minus s sub 2. If I take s sub 3, which is the sum of the first three, take away s sub 2, which is the sum of the first two, I'm just left with a sub 3. What's s sub 3? Now I can use this, right? You can use this summation, uh, or sequence of partial sums, uh, par um, nth term. So it's 5 minus 2 divided by 3 squared minus 5 minus 2 divided by 2 squared. So I get 2 ninths, 2 fourths, or a half. Do the arithmetic for me. Simplify, subtract. And you should get 5 eighteenths. In fact, we'll take this one step forward. Can you give me a general term for the a sub n's? I've got a general term for the s sub n's. Can you give me a general term for the a sub n's? Yeah. Look, just think about it. If a sub 3 is what? s sub 3 minus s sub 2. What's a sub 4 going to be? s sub 4 minus s sub 3. What's a sub 5 going to be? s sub 5 minus s sub 4. So in general, what is it? a sub n is s sub n minus s sub n minus 1. And s sub n, again, the formula was what? 5 minus uh, 2 over n squared minus well, when I plug in n minus 1 into this formula, I get 5 minus 2 over n minus 1 squared. Okay. Well, I'm just going to say, you know, you can simplify. It's rather messy. I'm not going to really be... Of course, I get 5 minus 5. That goes away, right? <laughs> and so you're just going to get negative... I guess I could say um, I'm going to get negative times negative 2 over n minus 1 squared minus 2 over n squared so um, you can you can simplify that if you want to but I'm just going to read it like that it's a formula okay it's a formula you can, you can make it a little more simple simpler 
Okay. Um, but there it is. Now we now we have now we have a particular formula. Um, and you might even try, you know, if I plug in n equal three, does that give me this one up here? Yeah, double check that because that's what we said a sub three was this. Okay, so that's playing around, and now we want to get down to the final thing. We said at the beginning that this series was convergent. So my question is, what's the sum of this series? That's where you have to understand the connection between the infinite series that is convergent or divergent and its sequence of partial sums. What's the connection between the two? The series is convergent, what, if and only if what? This sequence is convergent. Now we're talking about different things here. Sequences and series are not the same thing. A sequence is just a sequence of numbers, right? You know, with, with a, a function, really, a input 1, right, I get 3. Input 2, I get 4.5. Input 3, I get the next one, 4, 5, right? What, is the, what are we getting closer to? What are these numbers, 3, 4, and a half, da, 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 da? Are they getting closer and closer to something? If they are, we say the sequence converges. We'd say the limit as n goes to infinity of that sequence is that number. If it's finite, the sequence converges. Now, a series is convergent when? When its corresponding partial sum, sequence of partial sums, is convergent. And it's going to be divergent if the sequence of partial sums diverges, which means what the limit as n goes to infinity of s of n either does not exist or is, or is infinity. But in this case, we know this is convergent, so this limit must exist. In fact, we know what this limit is, right? So the, the, the sum is the limit as n goes to infinity of s of n. And s of n we said is what? 5 minus 2 divided n squared. And what's happening as n goes to infinity? 2 divided by n squared is going to 0. Right? That's getting smaller and smaller. This is approaching 5. It's getting closer and closer to 5. Getting closer and closer to 5. And that is the sum of our infinite series. Now, what's the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n? Don't come back up here and even look at that. There's no need to. What do we say? If a series is convergent, what has to be true of the terms we're adding up? They must diminish. They must vanish. They must go to zero. So since... Uh, the series a sub n converges. We're told that, right? And the sum is 5. We know that the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n is 0. End of story. Has to. Right? Has to. So if, it is, if the series is convergent, these a sub n's go to 0. Now, remember, just because these go to 0 doesn't necessarily, the, the opposite is not necessarily true. But we started with the fact that this series is convergent, therefore we know this must be true. Okay, you're going to need to really think about these things and get these connections between a series uh, and um, its two sequences, the sequence of terms we're adding up and the sequence of partial sums. And what's the, what's the connection between these? All right, in the next series uh, of, of lectures, we're going to begin to look at different ways that we can determine whether or not a series is convergent or divergent. Again, as I said, I think already, it's very difficult for a convergent series to determine its sum, unless it's geometric or something, uh, like a telescoping series or something. And so we're going to look at a lot of different tests, but they won't really necessarily tell us what the sum is, but it will tell us whether or not the series is convergent or divergent. And there's lots of different tests, and so that's what we'll be spending the next couple of lectures over.